Hey everybody! I don't know what that is. Jazz hands. <laughs> hey everyone! <laughs> uh, I decided to do a uh, TTC video back in, I don't know, May, whatever two months ago was, I believe. Uh, we decided to officially begin trying to extend our little King family and um, become TTC, trying to conceive. It's been, this month will be our third cycle, so I've com we've done two cycles of TTC. I just kind of wanted to update y'all and share some information, and I don't know, maybe some people will find this interesting, or if anything, at least you don't feel like you're alone or so I don't feel like I'm alone <laughs> so if you have any similar stories or anything you can leave them in the comments below let me go ahead and say this right now that trying to conceive means that we're trying to make a baby meaning that in order to make a baby you have to have sex so the word sex and sperm and vagina and uterus and periods and cycle days, cervical mucus, um, I don't know, anything like that. Those are all, those words are all going to come up because that's just nature and it's not gross. It's just life and that's how babies are made. So if that is not something you feel like hearing or don't care to think of me in that way, then you can stop watching now. And if you're brave enough and want to just continue on, then let's begin. <laughs> okay, this hair is going to bug me. Like I was saying in yesterday's vlog, um, it's funny how, you know, you spend most of your time trying to not get pregnant. You know, you're like, okay, let's not get pregnant. Be careful. Condoms, whatever. <laughs> Excuse me, whatever. And then when it comes time to actually have a baby... Everybody makes it seem like, you know, don't have unprotected sex because you're going to get pregnant right away, which is not always the case. Not trying to, like, say everybody just have unprotected sex because then, you know, nothing may happen. No, don't, don't do that. Be safe. But um, it's not that easy. It really isn't that easy. For some people it is, I guess. You know, for some people it is just first try and they get pregnant. Um, but... For most people, and from what I was reading, even healthy, perfectly healthy couples, it can still take, you know, anywhere from three to six months, even up to a year. A, a year is still a normal time frame for healthy couples trying to conceive. So as I plunged into the world, that was my diving, that was me plunging, <laughs> plunging headfirst into the world of that, of TTC, it was very interesting the first month that um that we officially started so the first things that i realized was wow there's a lot of acronyms holy crap i don't speak this language so many freaking acronyms that i was like huh what the heck are you saying it was so hard because people that leave messages on these forums they speak in code and i didn't know what they were saying because i never cared about cervical mucus or nothing like that <laughs> so um so that was an interesting new perspective on what was going on down there all those different things and so I was just amazed that after about I don't know a few weeks or so I became one of those people and I was like yeah my CM my DH you know we be deed and apparently my CM seems to be EW CM, which is a great thing. So hopefully that'll lead to a BFP this month and not a BFN and <laughs> like all this stuff. I kid you not. Um, which that was actually a sentence that actually meant something. Um, hopefully I don't see AF this that freaking witch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, those were all just different acronyms that I was having to learn, and I was absolutely amazed at the end of it how I was like, I became super fluent in TTC language and all the different ways to speak it and search it. Uh, I'm on CD18, and I'm feeling these things, and it's just really funny, so... That's just, that was interesting because I, I mean, I've heard of, I knew that there was like another language. I knew there was a lot of acronyms that come with it, but until you actually start trying to decode people's forum messages and trying to write it yourself, it does become useful to be able to use all those acronyms and people know what you're talking about. This is really funny. Speaking of CM or cervical mucus, uh, I remember the first, so after the first, uh, the first time I actually started 
uh, tracking. The couple days before ovulation is when you're most fertile and it's like optimal time to BD or baby dance or have sex. <laughs> Your body like gives you signs and signals that you know ovulation is coming and one of them is cervical mucus which is the stuff that comes out that is sometimes watery or creamy or sticky or oh, so gross and there's pictures oh my god the first time I was like am I brave enough to look at someone else's cervical mucus and I clicked it just because I was curious to see like that you know I don't know I was curious to see other people's cervical mucus I don't know so I clicked and I was like oh god that's weird I'm like looking at someone else's vagina stuff it's just oh does anybody else feel like that I was just weirded out but then it becomes normal and it was really funny because the first month that I was tracking and it was coming up to the days before and I started noticing you know that it was just uh, getting more watery and I was like wow it's real like it works your body does do those things that's so cool it's one thing to read about it and then it's really cool to kind of see your body actually doing the things that it says it's going to do in textbooks you know I guess sometimes I text my sister the first time and I was like things I thought I would never say and I was like wow I'm so happy to see watery cervical mucus woohoo <laughs> like when in my life did I ever think I was gonna say something like that so another thing that I realized that if I wanted to start um, you know we were starting to make babies I, I definitely wanted to be healthy not that I'm you know I try to watch what I eat and I exercise frequently and um, all that good stuff but I don't take vitamins and I know that that's something that is really good to do before you start trying to get pregnant um, one thing that they do recommend that you take is uh, folic acid so I researched that and there was just some other things that I decided I wanted to start taking so I'll kind of show y'all what I have personally been taking. The first thing that I started taking was folic acid. So this is what I take. It's methylfolate. Um, I got it at uh, Cost Plus. No. Yeah, Cost Plus Nutrition. Um, let me wait for it to focus. Focus on me. There we go. Uh, so I take this and it is, it's 400 micrograms. Um, but methyl folate is supposed to be the most, it says the most bioavailable form of folate. And I did confirm that with, because um, I did go see a, uh, a, a, like a midwife, an OBGYN type person, just like as a checkup before we started trying. And she was saying, yeah, go ahead and take that. And if you can find methyl folate, that's actually the best. I was like, oh, that is what I'm taking. She was like, yeah, high five. I was like, woohoo. <laughs> so it's the most, you know, it's the, like I said, it it's the, your body likes this version of it better. Then, um, of course, just uh, vitamin D. This is just Nature Made. I think I just found this at Walmart. Um, so my sister who just had a baby, those were the things that were kind of like the most important was uh, folic acid and vitamin D. So I started taking those two. And then, um, then after the first month, uh, I realized that I never got any cervical, I mean, I never got any egg white cervical mucus. Um, not that it's necessary to get pregnant, but it does help, you know, with the whole, it does help with the sperm living and pH balance and all that good stuff. So, um, I was researching and I read somewhere in one of the forums that someone start or someone uh, recommended evening primrose oil, which is here. And, and every time I say it, I think of primrose 17. <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. So, sorry. Every time I hear it, that's what I think of primrose 17. But she is actually named after the herb, so I guess it makes sense. Um, but this is it. Evening primrose oil, if it'll focus. Yes. Um, and this I also got at Cost, Cost Plus Nutrition. What I do is it says to take three of these because it is 500 mega, milligrams, megagrams. I don't know. Whatever MG is. I'm not. Micrograms. I don't know. I'm not a... I don't know whatever people is that measure anyways 500 mg um, so you take 1500 pretty much um, so I take that twice a day so that's actually 3000 mg if 
Yeah. Take three soft gels one to two times daily with meals. Um, so I would take it twice. I've been taking it twice a day. So the first time I started taking this, um, you're supposed to start on cycle day one, and which is your period. So cycle day one, and then you go all the way through ovulation. And then after ovulation, once ovulation happens, you're supposed to stop taking it. Um, it's just because that they actually also recommend evening primrose oil uh, to help induce labor. So when women are trying to, you know, go into labor and it's just not happening it's just a, a way that they recommend like some people actually get the capsules and like insert them inside and they burst and then that oil and stuff can help to cause contractions so um that's why they tell you to stop taking it after ovulation because it may i mean i'm not saying you're gonna die but if you're getting pregnant it may have effects with like the egg actually burying inside the uterus or something so from cycle day one to whenever you ovulate is when you're supposed to take them and then afterwards um in order to get the because this is pretty much it's fatty acids is what it it helps with um to get that uh to take fish oil afterwards so that used to or um oh, what's it called fish oil or Oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. Anyways, um, so I started taking this and I didn't hear about it or anything until I was actually on cycle day 8. So I started cycle day 8 and then continued and did the twice, you know, three capsules twice a day. And it actually made a difference on my second cycle. Um, I had egg white cervical mucus. It was crazy. It wasn't like a ton because probably I would have more if I started cycle day 1. Um, but starting cycle day 8, which is already kind of late in, because usually you ovulate 14, 15 around that time if you have a normal 28-day cycle, um, which I do. So, anyways, but it did, it made a difference. I was actually really surprised. Um, I did have it, like, two days. I had, I had a, I noticed more. So, that was really cool. And, and then also, I just upped my water intake to about three, I was drinking about three liters a day. So, I mean, I normally drink water I don't I hardly ever drink soda or tea I mean not that I don't I just hardly ever do um, but I started chugging water you know so I started drinking more water so about three liters every day so those two things combined I'm sure had something to do with it so this month I've started uh, cycle day one so I'm gonna, I want to see the difference if I end up having more um, egg white cervical mucus uh, this month because I think that would be really cool to see the difference. So that's so far what's been going on. Um, just interesting whole new world of TTC. It's just very, it brings up a lot and there's other things, other issues, or I don't call them issues, but just other things that me and Josh, it, it's just another thing that happens in marriage. You know, it's the next it's just the next thing you know you're always having you're always you're always growing as a couple and and you grow because you go through things together and then that brings you closer together and then you you come on through a whole nother change like once I actually do get pregnant that's gonna be a whole nother you know growing experience between both of us and that brings on challenges and arguments and um, just this of, of us trying to conceive has brought up not arguments per se but just learning just learning experiences on both of our parts so um i would like to keep making these videos if this is something that y'all enjoy and if you do please thumbs it up okay <laughs> and leave me comments down below if you are currently going through ttc or have experience or suggestions or comments or just want to say hi i don't know um and if you are just you know, looking at me like, man, I really didn't want to know about your cervical mucus. Well, now you know. <laughs> I will go ahead and say so long and thank you so much for watching and making it the whole way through this video. And I look forward to doing this again. And uh, I guess that's all I gotta say. Alright guys, see y'all later. Bye.